the Viking Age in Shield, Forest and Snottingham. So let's start at the beginning. England's first contact with Scandinavians would have been with traders visiting settlements on the coasts and inland rivers. But everything changed with the Viking raids which began with the plunder of Lindy's farm in 793. But it was not until 865 when the great army of Danish Vikings invaded England and they were led by Halfdan Ragnarsson and Ivor the Boneless and they did not meet serious resistance until they reached Wessex and trouble continued until the Danes were paid off by Alfred the Great but by this time the invaders had colonised Northumbria, East Anglia and Mercia creating the Dane law. During the 900s the English kings of Wessex expanded northwards. By 927 all the northern rulers had submitted to King Athelstan. And when in 1002 Ethelred ordered the massacre of all Danes living in England, it prompted the attacks by Sven Folkbeard, the Danish king. And in 1013 Sven invaded and was accepted as King of England, but died shortly afterwards and his son Canute became the English King in 1016. And that carried on to the Norman invasion of 1066, which brought an end to the Viking Age in England. But many of their customs and influences were continuing parts of the country and culture. Now, a bit more information on the Vikings in Sherwood. In 867, the Danes occupied Nottingham and they were besieged by Kings Ethelred and his brother Alfred and they were in support of King Bered of Mercia. But they failed to draw the invaders into battle. And in order to establish a peace, Bered of Mercia concedes Nottingham to the Danes in exchange for leaving the rest of Mercia undisturbed. Now, some of the Vikings were given land to farm in the area known as Shield Forest, or the Shire Wood, and it's believed they created an assembly site on Thinghow, the point to discuss matters and, dis and settle disputes. And the formulation of this customary law went far beyond the law of the Anglo-Saxon hundred, and was later recognised as Dane law, as opposed to English law. And these Viking settlers may have contributed to the legends of Robin Hood and his band of outlaws in Sherwood Forest. Roughly translated, Thing is from Old Norse for assembly place and How is Old Norse for mound or grave mound. So the name Thing How may be of Old Norse origin but the site may be much much older than the Dane law possibly even Bronze Age. It is reminiscent of Bronze Age barrows, as the word how often indicates the presence of a prehistoric barrow, as I mentioned. And sadly it was lost to history until it was rediscovered in 2005. Between 2013 and 17, archaeological excavations were carried out there geophysical magnetometry surveys, topographic surveys, landscape analysis, LIDAR, all the usual stuff. And all this uh, archaeological work has helped to show that the site of Thinghow consists of a complex, possible complex, of monuments. Now I can see some in the woods look like other mounds with trees growing out of them. Some of the findings included a blade-like flake of Mesolithic or early Neolithic age, fragments of struck flake of Neolithic to Bronze Age age, and they're all found outside the mound and predate the construction of the earthwork. And there is even Roman pottery shards found there. 
So the environmental e evidence indicates that a Bronze Age construction period for the bank and ditch is possible. But the site has been used stretching back to the Ice Age. One thing we can be sure of, it was of great importance to the Vikings. But it seems possible they may have reused it from a Bronze Age origin, as was often the case. In this area you can just about make out where the bank and ditch is. But I have to come back in winter to suss it all out. <laughs> 